And so as I made my own assessment, of all the candidates who are running this year, ironically, I chose the one person with whom I did not serve. I chose Barack Obama. Right. And I did for three reasons. <laughs> I chose him in part because I happen to believe that he is right on virtually every single issue for which I care deeply. I like his position on Iraq. I like his position on health care. I like his position on energy. I like his position on climate. I like his position on tax policy and on the economy. I like his position on the message he would send to the rest of the world. And I like his message of hope. Yeah. But it goes beyond my passion for his passions. I also believe that once in a while somebody comes along who can really ignite an enthusiasm and an excitement and bring out people unlike we've seen in long, long times. I was a young man, and I know that some of you are are uh, much, much younger than I am, so you'd never remember this, but back in the 60s, some of us got very excited about John and Robert Kennedy. Some of us got very excited about Martin Luther King. Some of us got very excited to hear George McGovern here in South Dakota. Some of us really I can remember coming home to my parents and saying, I want to major in political science. And they said, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> We're thinking more medicine or engineering. You're talking about political science. I remember my father at the kitchen table saying, what in the world do you do with a political science degree? He said, I don't know, but I want to be in public service. I want to be in politics. I want to, I want to be a part of what the Kennedys and Martin Luther King are doing right now. Well, we've gone through a lot of tough times. We went through the 70s and Watergate and all the malaise. We went through the 80s with all of the problems of, 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 of Nicaragua and the Contras and, and the scandals. We went through the 90s with all the problems that we had to go through and the impeachment. And year after year, decade after decade, more and more people kept saying, you know what, this isn't working. I don't want to be a part of politics. I hope my kids don't want to go into political science. And more and more we've turned people away where the real problem was the diminution of the political voter bases in this country all over. But then along comes somebody with a funny name. And not only a funny name, but someone who happens to be African American. And people get excited again. Four years ago, 140 people, 140,000 people voted in Iowa. This year, it was 290,000. <laughs> Four years ago, we had about 260,000 people who voted in South Carolina. This year, it was 590,000 people. Four years ago. This is my favorite. Four years ago, we had 9,000 people who voted in the caucuses in Nevada. This year, it was 117,000. Wow. That's what's happening. And that is exciting. Yes. That is what turns me on. This is what democracy should be all about. People getting excited about hearing leaders that connect and give them hope. And give them the sense that we can do it all over again. They say we can't solve the health care problem, and Barack says, yes, we can. They say that we can't solve the economic disparity in this country, and Barack says, yes, we can. They say we can't solve the problems with regard to the respect for rule of law and restoring constitutional rights, and Barack says, yes, we can. We can do this, but it's going to take leadership. And I like that at Barack Obama, and I know you do too. I like about him, 
and my third reason for supporting you. And that is that I've been around politics a long time, and I will tell you, and you don't even have to be told, you know I carry a lot of baggage because of all the fights that I had to be through at the end. I was the obstructionist, and you know what? The longer this goes, the more proud I am of that. I think I So I look back with, with pride at some of that, but I will tell you this, if we're going to accomplish these things, that if indeed yes we can is true, then we've got to bring people together. We've got to have somebody who can say, look, forget whatever happened in the past. Drop the grudges, drop all of the BS. Understand that if we're going to govern again, if we're going to rise to this occasion, and if we're going to meet the challenges of the future, then we've got to do more than talk about it. We've got to act. We've got to work as Republicans and Democrats and Independents to begin solving these problems so we don't look as if we are completely incapable of addressing the issues that confront our country today. And I don't know many people who could do that, frankly. But I truly believe that Barack Obama can. It's in his genes. It's in his DNA. He's got the capacity to bring us together. And so, for those reasons, I must say, 14 years ago, 14 months ago, I feels like years now, 14, <laughs> 14 months ago, approximately 15 months, I made the decision to publicly endorse him. And it's been an incredible ride these last 15 months. Some of it's been very hard. Much harder on him than on any of us. Some of it's been very exhilarating. Some of it has been very hopeful. And it's not over yet. Whether or not we succeed depends on, first, how well he does. Secondly, how well we do organizing the effort in those states that remain. Yes. Third, and how well we do in unifying the Democratic Party in our country, both after the convention and after the election, that will determine how well we do as a country. And whether we can answer the question, what kind of country do we want to be in the way that I tried to describe tonight? I believe that Barack Obama can deliver. I believe, like Lyndon Johnson, he can stand there and say, I now have the power and I will use it. I believe that my grandchildren have a far better chance to be hopeful and to live their lives with all that it can mean for them as, as young Americans all through this new century with the leadership of a Barack Obama. I believe that we can restore the greatness of our country. William Jennings Bryan said something else that I've always appreciated. He said, destiny is not a matter of chance but a matter of choice. Not something to be waited for, but something to be achieved. Our destiny is out there for us to achieve. And so I would hope that a lot of us would have the opportunity come January 20th to stand on the west lawn of the Capitol and to see the first African American sworn in as the President of the United States. saying those three words, yes, we can. Thank you all very, very much. I appreciate the being here.